Nick, can I ask about coaching styles as well? Because there's a variety of different ways about someone, how someone can coach somebody else. And I, you talk about, I've seen you talk about being player-centered and an empowered approach. Again, you know, 20 years ago, if you think about to the days of Brian Clough, that approach would have been knocked out of the water. But today, particularly you look at Klopp and Guardiola as two, you know, two of the best coaches in the land right now, their style is very different to what it was 20 years ago, isn't it? It is. I mean, your, your maths needs to change. That's probably 40, 50 years ago for Clough now. I'm being, uh, I'm being a little bit generous, I think. I'm being generous. <laughs> <laughs> but, but interestingly, so I know, I know players that played for him a lad that used to work for me did, one of the England scouts. And Clough was player-centred in his own way, was, was player-centred. Um, but uh, when you look at coaches like, like Klopp and Guardiola at the top end, again, and, and knowing people that, that work at both of the clubs and that know them well. So Guardiola is very good at changing his leadership style depending on where he is and his um, behaviours based upon what he's trying to achieve at different things. So we would see the animated coach on the side of the pitch, you know, pointing and gesticulating and, you know, shouting at people what to do. But behind the scenes, he's um, uh, very, very in touch with individuals and helping them develop. Uh, when it comes to looking at game plans and how they're going to beat teams, he's very um, analytical and process driven in his thinking, which is a very different kind of um mindset and behavior style to somebody that might be all about the people but what he's good at is is shifting and evolving how he works and uh klopp is the same you know we see the very uh empathic side of him which is lots of hugs and and that side of things but again he's able to shift and change and and this is what we're probably looking for in the modern day coach that you know i'm sure the um the system that Lydia's in and Lydia will work with kind of psychologists that will kind of support that kind of culture and environment. And I'm sure they're, they're stretching and challenging Lydia to recognize that, you know, she might come from a, a here as a default position, but in order to maintain effectiveness and impact, she needs to start to work in different ways in order to connect with different players. So ultimately it's, it's recognizing where you are, what your strength might be, but also kind of recognizing some of your own blind spots in your coaching and, and how you then go about developing those as well. But the best coaches have the ability to to move and flex their leadership styles uh, as the as the situation requires really that nicely segues into my next topic actually which is about skills um sean let's come to you skills that young people need to develop if they want to become a sports coach yeah i was just going to add to the next point i have this 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 view and it's kind of linked to you know uh, previous coaching models uh, have gone gone before you, you've got to you've got to be able to to obviously coach the activity there is still an element of that you, you you can't just leave that alone and that's kind of this traditional space but it's more now about understanding what your coaching looks like in your environment and how you create an environment for that person in front of you or for that group of people in front of you how can you engage them how can you entice them so it's a really positive inclusive um, experience and the other bit is about how you coach those relationships. So you might have a really good environment. You might have a um, really good grasp of your subject knowledge, your task or activity, but you also need to continue to keep working on those relationships. If you're um, you know, an individual sport, that, that relationship between a coach and athlete is obviously really important. If it's a, a group or team sport, um, then again, you've got a number of different relationships between you and them and obviously each other that you need to harness and I suppose put a lot of energy into. And I guess that's that's probably sounds a little bit in that talent environment. It's that step back from that and look at the grassroots community environment. Maybe, I don't know, a local a local community club that plays, I don't know, basketball, handball, whatever it may be. It could be 15, 20 people coming to you with very different backgrounds, very different circumstances. That day that they've just had, whether that be that somewhat, you know, an adult session where they've come from work, or maybe they've um, got, got two, three children that they've had to look after, drop off at school. They, they come with all sorts of um, situations. We all do. And I think where we're moving to is now the ability um, to coach the individual and to coach the group as much as the task or the activity itself. And learning and the training programs that are supporting young people, hopefully they'll start to feel that much more now than perhaps. Um, when I when I certainly went through the coach education pathway, 
it was all about this is what you've got to do as a coach. And to be honest, there wasn't a huge amount of reflection or sense making. I had to do that as an individual. Um, but today, I'd like to think that more often than not, a young person um, experiencing coach education or learning and development programs will start to get a feel of these important qualities, the sense of being a friendly person, the sense of interacting with others, the sense of understanding the needs of that person. Um, those, those are certainly some of, the, some of the top qualities, I guess, a, a, coach, a young coach will need moving forward. And Lydia, does somebody need to be flexible in their approach and also be adaptable in the way they coach as well? Yeah, I think definitely because, you know, the, the players you've got, so you've got a squad of 20 players, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of difference in there. There's difference in personalities. There's difference in training age. You know, like when the girls come into our international pathway, I could have one that's been at a centre of excellence for eight years by the time they reach us, but you might have one that's actually come from grassroots and has less of a training age or hasn't been in foot involved in football for as long. So there's so many different factors, their family, you know, what background they've got, just it's a whole host. So I think without having an awareness of that, and that's where relationships are so important. I know we've spoken about it a lot, but I think as the coach, unless you really try and, you know, get to know those people as individuals and, and actually open up conversations that are outside of football, then there could be a massive bit, bit of insight that that you're just losing completely. Um, and one of my other favourite quotes uh, around these relationships is that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. So I think just having that individual um, openness with players and showing them that you're there to support them is a really big trigger in them hopefully opening up and that relationship being built. And I'm a big believer that, you know, outside of the football, there's there's so much that can be done to build those relationships and and really push those individuals on. Like I'm adamant and about this like holistic approach to to football. So the girls come away with us, you know, they want to play for England. What a great like experience it might be. For example, we went to USA in February, you know, 10 days in USA. You're not going to turn that down as a 17 year old. But um, we took the girls to Disney on the last day because I'm adamant that, you know, in 10 years time, they won't remember the results against US, but they'll remember that they went to Disney. And I think, you know, those relationships that you build and your real understanding of what's really driving those players, but actually remembering that they are just, you know, 17 year old kids that are going to get excited by Disney. That's all part of, you know, how you develop them and improve them as players. Nick, it is still important, though, to have those those traditional skills, if you like, of, you know, good writing skills, being organised mathematics, data, I believe they're just as important in coaching as they have ever been. Yeah, I think it's important that you have a, um, a, a core foundation. And I think where things have certainly moved from a technology perspective and, you know, you know, arguably a lot of young people now are probably better placed than us older people like me and Sean and Lydia, I'm not including you and the old people, but um, uh, that, uh, you know, Session planning is now done a lot on cloud-based technology platforms and use of data analytics or analysis software or coding of games or player performance. A lot of that is done through tech. So having a really good understanding and grasp of technology um, is important, but the, the core skills ultimately is still going to be important because you're not going to be able to get away from, uh, you know, if I'm watching a game, you know, I'm still scribbling notes in a book about things that I need to reflect upon, whether it's about my own coaching or some stuff that I might have seen the kids do. So it's still a really important skill to do.